Dark patterns and deceptive designs, or DPs, are problematic elements of user interfaces, especially in digital consumer products. Recently, because of the sensitivity of the topic and ethical restrictions, many people have looked to alternatives to real apps and websites and consumer products, such as simulations or maybe non-interactive methods like screenshots on a questionnaire. In this breaking work, we look at the Japanese consumer context. We conducted a user study with an interactive e-commerce simulation. First, we let people experience the website without any knowledge of DPs and without any knowledge of the goal of the study. We then did an interview with the static version of the website so they were able to have access to all of the DPs just in case they missed them. We also told them about DPs and then we did a debrief revealing the study's focus on DPs. So we created this online shopping website using the OECD identified types of DPs as well as the special Japanese DPs that were found last year and reported at Kai. Half of people signed up unintentionally for the special Cyber Select membership, and only 42% of people noticed this. In addition, 90% of participants weren't able to cancel their account. Most cases of DPs were unnoticeable, and many people, nearly half, felt that most cases were not a big deal. Different forms of DPs were more or less noticeable than others. In particular, the misleading reference pricing went unnoticed by 90% of participants. Everyone was susceptible no matter their age, gender, or education. In short, nearly two-thirds of DPs went unnoticed. And for the rest, the noticeability and deceptibility varied, as did people's reactions and feelings towards each pattern. We have to be careful about how people react and the thrust that they place in companies. We also have to be careful of the low English literacy levels among the population and the DPs that can take advantage of that. Alphabet soup in particular was the most subversive. We need to be careful of symbols that cross linguistic boundaries but have very different meanings in commercial contexts, such as the yen symbol here. We also found that sneaking and obstruction were perhaps less deceptive and more disruptive. Of course, this is a small study without an experimental control, so we need to scale it up and also scale down the number of DPs to a more realistic level, as well as refine our methodology.